Every Tesla comes standard with autopilot, an advanced lane keep and traffic aware cruise control, which is one of the best in the industry. But to enable many more features on your Tesla, you'll need to buy the full self-driving software package. And as of January 17th, Tesla has raised the price of full self-driving to $12,000. So what exactly is the difference between autopilot and full self-driving, and what are you getting for that $12,000? In this video, we're gonna go over the differences and ask the important question, is full self-driving worth $12,000? No! Oh God! No! Okay, all right, all right. Is full self-driving worth 12? No! So let's start with the most basic thing your Tesla can do to help you drive around. Tesla's lowest form of driver assist is traffic aware cruise control. There is no dumb cruise control on Tesla's. If you haven't purchased full self-driving, this traffic aware cruise control is just like any other car. And if there's a stop sign or a stoplight or something, you'll have to take over to do that. All Tesla vehicles also include a list of safety features that are standard. There's red light and stop sign warning. So if you're using autopilot and there's a red light or a stop sign coming up and it looks like you're not gonna take over in time, the car will yell at you to take over. Now the car's not gonna actually do anything. This isn't to be relied on. It's just kind of a backup emergency. Maybe if you're not paying attention to say, hey, look out, you need to stop here. Lane departure avoidance and emergency lane departure avoidance. Say you're driving the car, you're not using autopilot. If you start to drift out of your lane, the car will just bounce you back into your lane. If you keep bouncing up against the lines, the car will beep at you, tell you to take over, tell you to pay attention. Drift into the other lane. Take control immediately. Again, this isn't to be relied on. It works very well, but this is a backup in case you're getting distracted or for whatever reason you're coming out of your lane, the car will fix you. Automatic emergency braking. This is available in most modern cars where if a collision is imminent, the car will slam on the brakes at the last second. This isn't so much to avoid an accident as much as it is to slow you down and reduce the severity of an accident that at that point is unavoidable. Obstacle aware acceleration is a very cool safety feature that I'm not aware of in other cars, although it may be available in some. If you press the accelerator and the Tesla detects something close in front of you, it will kind of delay your accelerator input. It's a little difficult to describe, but imagine you slam on the accelerator. You expect to accelerate really hard. If the car detects something there, it will delay that. So it's not going to stop you from accelerating, but it'll give you enough time to go, whoa, hey, wait a second. I didn't mean to press the pedal that hard, or I just realized there was something in my way. And then blind spot monitoring is a little different in Tesla's. There's no icon on your side mirrors, but what will happen when you go to change lanes, when you turn your turn signal on, there's somebody in your blind spot on the display, the car will turn red. And also the lane line will turn red on the display to show you it's not time to go. You should wait until this person is out of the way. Now, if you go to change lanes anyway, say you don't check that or you ignore it, then the car is going to beep at you and let you know, hey, somebody's in the way, do not change lanes right now. Tesla also recently added a pop-up camera. So when you turn on your turn signal, it will bring up the camera feed so you can just see what's in your blind spot just by looking a little bit to the right of your steering wheel. And all right, the price of full self-driving, $12,000, is really expensive. But what if you could just win a Tesla and an entire house? Well, thanks to Omaze, today's video sponsor, that is possible. Omaze gives away one-of-a-kind prizes and experiences while donating money to chosen charities all across the world. Their sustainable approach to fundraising means nonprofits can spend less time and money raising funds and focus on serving the needs of their communities. Not only can you win a Tesla Model Y, but you can also win this $4.3 million Los Angeles dream home. It's a modern farmhouse with five bedrooms, six bathrooms spread across 5,800 square feet. It's great for hosting parties with a pool, a basketball court, a putting green, and even an in-home movie theater. Hiking, golfing, surfing, and vibrant nightlife are just minutes away. If you're not into the house, you can choose a multi-million dollar cash prize instead. Now you really can afford full self-driving for your Tesla. And you can enter this contest and feel good about it. Rebuilding together, devoted to repairing the homes of veterans, people with disabilities, and neighbors with low income to help keep our communities intact. Long-term projects include revitalizing entire neighborhoods, bringing together local volunteers and leaders to improve parks, schools, community centers, and nonprofit facilities, and also rebuilding together is instrumental in recovery efforts after natural disasters, helping residents rebuild their homes and lives. Donate $10, support rebuilding together, and enter for a chance to win a multi-million dollar home and a Tesla Model 3 by going to the link omaze.com slash dirty Tesla. So moving on to basic autopilot. It is pretty basic. It keeps your lane and it keeps your speed. If you have lane lines and you turn autopilot on, it'll keep you within that lane. Even if the road is bending, even a 90 degree bend in the road, 
road, the car will be able to drive around that no problem. It'll slow down for sharp curves and it'll speed back up once the curve is done. Again, just like the traffic aware cruise control, if a car is in front of you and you have your speed set to 50 and they're going 40, your Tesla will just move up close to them depending on your set following distance and then it'll match their speed until they speed up or they're out of the way. When autopilot is enabled, the Tesla will come to full stops for cars in front of you and resume driving when there's space to do so. When autopilot's enabled, there's a little bit of resistance in the steering wheel if you wanna take over. It's very easy to take over, it doesn't take much force, but if you pull on the steering wheel very lightly, you will not take over, you will not be influencing the car, it will still be steering for you. Now, while autopilot is enabled, you need to pay attention to the road, and there's two ways Tesla monitors you. Number one, you have to have some force on the steering wheel. So if you have your hand on the steering wheel and you have a little bit of weight pulling either left or right, then the car knows you're paying attention, it's not gonna bother you. You can take your hands off the wheel for short amounts of time, maybe 10 to 30 seconds about at a time, and the car will continue to drive. But then a blue message will pop up and it'll ask you to put your hands on the wheel. If you do not do so, the car will slow to a stop and put the hazard lights on, and you will not be able to use autopilot again until you put the car into park and then put it into drive again. One of the really interesting passive abilities of autopilot and full self-driving is called adjacent lane speed keeping. So say there's two lanes of traffic, you're going 60 miles an hour, and the lane next to you is also going 60 miles an hour. If the lane next to you slows down, your car will see that adjacent lane speed reducing and also reduce its speed to kind of match that lane or just make it so it's not going so much faster than the lane to the left of you. It's actually a really clever feature and it works incredibly well, especially because if this lane's slowing down, there's a good chance that in your lane coming up soon, they're also slowing down and it helps your car preemptively slow down for whatever's coming up next. Now we're on to full self-driving. What is this $12,000 gonna get you? Well, there's a lot of different things it's gonna get you. There's some features with auto park and summon and then some highway driving and then there's full self-driving beta, which as of the making of this video is still kind of a restricted access, although anybody that purchases full self-driving can technically get access to full self-driving beta, but you're gonna be waiting just a little bit if you're Tesla is brand new and it's kind of weird. So we'll go over all of these in separate parts. So first of all, the additional features you get with full self-driving, you get auto park where the car will park itself. All it needs is lane lines and it's actually pretty good at it now. The older versions of auto park were not very good. Now all you need is some lines in a parking lot and the car will see those. You put the car in reverse. You don't even always have to put the car in reverse. Sometimes it'll suggest that you park. You press the park button and you let the car do its thing. It's a little slow and sometimes it'll need to maneuver a couple of times when you wouldn't need to do that, but it does work reliably in my experience and it does work well. Summon or dumb summon that I like to call it. This is where you can use your app to move your car forward or backwards. You don't have to be in the car. Nobody has to be in the car. You open up the app and you just press the forward or backwards arrow in the app and then the car will move forwards or backwards. I actually use this really often when I'm moving my car around in the driveway. It's just so easy and convenient to open the app and tell it to move forward, you know, 30 or 40 feet, and then it's out of the way for whatever I'm doing. Smart Summon, now this brings Summon to a whole new level. You can request your car come to you from anywhere in a parking lot. You don't technically have to have a view of the car, but you should, you are supposed to monitor the car, make sure it's being safe, not running into anything, anyone. Again, I've never had a problem with this. It's done pretty well in moving around parking lots, but it can be a little nerve wracking, especially when it's new, to watch your car just like drive around a parking lot and it'll steer and it'll go around things. And it's very cool, but yeah, I don't use it all that often because it can be a little slow. As of now, the max speed is five or six miles per hour, which is fair for a self-driving car that has nobody in it but it can be a little awkward and a little weird in a parking lot, especially if it's busy. This is not something I would ever be using in a busy parking lot. If there's no one around and it's raining and you want the car to come pick you up, I've done it and it works well enough that it's been cool to be like, oh, I didn't have to you know, walk out in the rain. You know, Not that that's that big of a deal, but I have it on the car, it was fun to use. My biggest complaint with Smart Summon that I hope Tesla can address is say you're standing on the curb outside of a store, the car will drive up to you and say this is the curb. Uh, it'll just kind of point at it. <laughs> uh, sometimes it'll be a little angled, but it won't like pull up next to the curb like a person would and kind of get out of the way of everybody. It'll just be like in the middle of everything. And then you're kind of struggling to get in the car, get out of the way. So yeah, if it's busy, it's not very useful. Okay, so moving on to the actual driving features 
of buying the full self-driving package for $12,000. First up, we have Navigate on Autopilot. Now, this is gonna be used only on the highway, and to be fair, this may be changing soon as full self-driving beta gets more and more updates. Those features may come into this, but as of today, what you get is the car can do pretty much everything on the highway, and it's actually very good at this. So once you're on the on-ramp, you can turn on full self-driving. The car can then merge onto the highway for you. It can keep your lane. It can change lanes to go around slower drivers. It can change lanes to make it to your exit. It. it can move out of the passing lane. It can take exits. It can do interchanges. Pretty much everything on the highway that needs to be done, it can do. Now, of course, you're still paying attention. Hand is still on the wheel. You will have to take over sometimes, but I can often make it to work doing pretty much nothing. I do have my lane changes set to confirm, so the car will ask me first before it does a lane change. I find this a little less stressful because sometimes the car will change lanes a little too often to go a bit faster, and I just don't care. <laughs> if I'm going 72 miles per hour and the car wants to go 75, I just don't care to pass anybody. I'll just let the car sit there and ignore that lane change request. But if someone's going really slow or I have an exit coming up, then I will click the turn signal, the car will change lanes, it does very well, it's very smooth, and then it'll continue on the journey. Taking exits, it will do automatically, you don't have to confirm that, and in my experience, it's very good, of course, every once in a while, it'll sometimes take the exit a little too fast, or maybe take it a little later than you would, but for the most part, in my experience, it's very good at taking exits and doing almost all of these highway maneuvers. One of the newer features is a green light chime. So I'm not sure why this is full self-driving only. I think this should be included on all the cars. But if you are at a stoplight, you have nothing on, no autopilot, anything like that, and the light turns green, your car will ding if you don't start to go. The ding is really fast, so most of the time it'll ding even if you're staring at the light. Uh, but I find it really useful, especially if you don't always pay attention sitting at a red light. It's really nice to just kind of remind you, hey, it's time to go. This feature works really well. It's incredibly reliable. The only time I've seen it kind of mess up and ding when it shouldn't is if, say, you're in the straight lane and the left turn lane is next to you. If the left turn arrow turns green, every once in a while, the Tesla will ding and tell you, hey, you should go. Uh, but it's pretty rare. I haven't seen that very often. Also included is stop sign and stoplight recognition and response. So if you're on full self-driving, you have it turned on and you have a stop sign coming up, the car will slow to a stop. It does a very good job at this. Once the car has stopped completely, you must confirm that it's safe to go through the stop sign. You just touch the accelerator or you press the drive stalk down and the car will continue through. If somebody is in your way and you're playing around and you press that stalk or hit the accelerator, of course, all accelerator input by the human will override the car, but the car is not gonna continue to go if somebody's in front of you. If you press the stalk, the car may start to creep and then once the person's out of the way, then it will continue. Same thing with red lights. As you approach a red light, the car will come to a stop for you. Through green lights, you actually have to confirm that the light is green and tell the car to go through unless somebody's in front of you. If you have a driver in front of you driving, the car will follow them right through the green light and that works really well as well. For red lights, the car will stop. If you're the first car, when the light turns green, you have to confirm to go. If there's a car in front of you, your car will follow them through once the light turns green. If somebody was to run a red light in front of you, your Tesla will not go through it. It will stop at the red light. But like with all of these features for now, you're still paying attention. You still gotta be ready to hit the brake. Although all of these things seem to work very well. Any non-divided highways, the top speed limit that you can set is five miles per hour over the posted speed limit. Now the car can read speed limit signs, so it will adjust its speed to the speed limit sign, but sometimes it's a little slow to do that and you'll have to adjust it yourself. But for the most part, it works pretty well overall. When you're on the highway, or if you're on a divided road, so there's like a center grass median or something, you can set the speed as high as you want, up to 80 miles per hour for cars with Tesla Vision, which is most Model 3 and Model Y as of the making of this video. And up to 90 miles per hour if you have a radar. So if you have an older Model 3 or Model Y or the new S and X are still coming with radar as far as I know, but Tesla's changing things all the time. So double check uh, before you take delivery. Now, another huge perk of buying full self-driving is this should cover any hardware upgrades you need in the future if they're needed for full self-driving to function. Now, this isn't promised by Tesla, so it's not something we can bank on, but historically, Tesla has given owners free upgrades to hardware needed for full self-driving. Some older SNX vehicles actually had some older cameras that are being replaced by Tesla so they can work on the new full self-driving beta as well. Now, going forward, if there's a hardware for, is Tesla gonna upgrade you to that? It's hard to say because all cars that you can buy today are technically full self-driving beta capable, which is the final thing we're gonna talk about in this video and kind of covers Tesla's final point on their website, which says coming soon, auto steer on city streets. So since ordering a car today technically can auto steer on city streets, I don't know if they're gonna upgrade people to hardware for, for free. It may be included, it may not. Because while auto steer on city streets doesn't mean level four or level five full self-driving, 
it is what Tesla says on the website when you purchase the car. And if your car is capable of that, I don't know if they will need to do that upgrade or not. So the final big thing that you get for your $12,000 and probably the most appealing to a lot of people is full self-driving beta. Now this is where the car can actually attempt to take you from point A to point B with no interventions. You jump in the car, put in your destination, put the car in drive, turn on autopilot either immediately or soon after getting onto the road, and then the car will try to get you wherever you told it to go, and you shouldn't hopefully have to do anything. And while full self-driving beta is the most desirable part of this $12,000 option, you don't even get full self-driving beta right away after you pay the $12,000. You first have to go through Tesla's safety score, and once you have that score even, the rollout is confusing, with some people waiting weeks after they get their safety score to even have access to the beta anyway. Now, as of the making of this video, full self-driving beta is pretty good, but it has a pretty big learning curve and still has a lot of quirks and does some weird things. Most drives for me, even simple ones, require me to intervene at some point. This is definitely not at a point where you're gonna be sitting there looking at your phone, looking at a laptop, taking a nap. I mean, not even close to anything like that. You actually pay extra, you pay more attention while using full self-driving beta than if you just drive the car yourself. If you wanna know more about the details of how full self-driving beta does, I have tons of videos about that. So I would watch a couple of those to kind of get a feel for how full self-driving beta is doing now. But overall, just keep in mind that this is not something that you hop in the car and you just let it drive you there. And I think this is why a lot of people don't wanna spend the $12,000 because it's more work. Now, if you're the right type of person, you may enjoy that. I myself, I love using beta, even though it's more work because I find it fun, I find it entertaining, I find it interesting, and I wanna contribute that data back to Tesla to help them make the system better. Now, if this is not something you think would be cool or interesting or fun, then it's probably not worth it for you. But beta's capabilities are anything from left turns, right turns, roundabouts, lane switching, really anything. It can do pretty much anything you need to get from point A to point B. The big things it struggles with is if you get to a dead end, it doesn't know how to turn around yet, so it will ask you for assistance. Parking lots don't work very well as of now. You can turn it on in the parking lot, but its movements are a lot more erratic, and it doesn't seem like it ever exactly knows what it needs to do to get out of the parking lot. And then anything really unmapped, it's not nearly as good at. Now, it does use vision. It can drive in unmapped areas. It's just not as good as the mapped areas. Now, of course, there's also the option to subscribe to Full Self Driving. Currently, it costs $200 a month if you want to subscribe, and you can cancel at any time. So it may be a great option to try out full self-driving, and if you think you're gonna keep the car long enough where it makes sense to pay the full 12,000 rather than paying 200 monthly, you could then cancel the subscription and pay for the software so that you own it. Now, it doesn't sound like the price of this is increasing quite yet, but Elon Musk did say that the price of subscription will eventually rise as well. Personally, I like to own my things, so I found it weird that people wanted to rent this, but I guess if you are trading out cars every couple of years, this makes way more sense than paying ten dollars or $12,000 for something that doesn't really increase the value of your car all that much if you're trading in, but it can increase the value of your car if you're doing a private sale. Yes, full self-driving does transfer with your car in a private sale. So, final question, is full self-driving beta worth $12,000? Every time I'm asked this question, no matter what price full self-driving has been, I've always said probably not. When I made this video two years ago, and full self-driving was $7,000, which had just been raised from $6,000, I said no at that time. <laughs> I, the features you were getting at that time, I just didn't find it worth it. It's so expensive. And now $12,000, I mean, that's like a car or two cars that you could get instead of just getting this software that doesn't even drive you all over the place yet with you sleeping in the car. Now, looking back at those old videos, should you have paid $7,000 picking up your Tesla back then? Yeah, I think you probably should have, and I did mention that maybe in the future we would regret not spending $7,000 on full self-driving depending on what features were coming. Well, as of today, it's really hard to recommend full self-driving for $12,000. I just think it's too expensive. I really do. But imagine if one year, two years, even three years from now, if full self-driving can actually drive you from point A to point B with you not doing anything and not paying attention. Three years from now, it's possible. Would that be worth $12,000? I think it would be. And you'd still have your car. Three years is not that long of a time for a car. So you really gotta weigh it that way. If $12,000 is a ton of money for you, and you just can't spend it, it's not worth it. It's not worth kind of the stress and struggle to be adding this to your car. If $12,000 is nothing to you and you don't care and you're gonna keep your car for three or five years, it might be worth it. So of course, it's a really personal question, but I personally cannot recommend anybody spending $12,000 on full self-driving. 
with what you get at the time. It's not a wise decision to pay a bunch of money for something for future promises. It's just never the right decision. Um, but maybe it is the right decision and you find out three years from now. So you really got to make that call on your own. Overall, I hope I answered all your questions about autopilot and full self-driving. If you have any more questions, leave them down in the comments below. I will get to those and you will see me in the next video.